in our today's lecture we'll be learning about the second order circuits in the previous lecture we considered circuits with a single storage element either a capacitor or an inductor and those were first order circuits we call these circuits to be first order circuits since the differential equation that had been describing them were of first order in this chapter we will consider circuits containing two storage elements that means both capacitor and inductor and these circuits are called second order circuits because these have been described by the differential equations differential equations describing these circuits are of order 2 and a simpler kind of second order circuit consists a resistor an inductor and a capacitor either in series or in parallel an operational amplifier or op amp along with capacitor and inductor also can make a second order circuit so how do we analyze this second order circuit our analysis of the second order circuits will be in the similar way as employed in case of first order circuits that means first we will consider that these circuits have been excited excited by initial conditions that means some kind of voltage or current source has been employed at time t equal to minus infinity up till time t equal to zero and then it was removed though there are dependent and independent sources that can be in any kind of circuits but this kind of circuits are having only dependent sources they cannot have independent sources so these are source free circuits so for finding these initial conditions we have to remember two points point 1 is that as always in circuit analysis we must carefully handle the polarity of voltage across the capacitor and the direction of the current through the inductor we have to keep in mind that these voltages v and current i are defined strictly according to the passive sign convention this is the first point that you have to remember you have to remember the passive sign convention for v and i 
V is the voltage across the capacitor and I is the current through the inductor. And the second point, point two, is that the voltage across the capacitor, capacitor voltage, it is always continuous at time t equal to zero. That means V at time t is zero minus is equal to V at time t is zero and equal to V at time t zero plus. That means the voltage across the capacitor cannot be changed abruptly. Same is the case with the inductor current. The current through the inductor at time t equal to 0 minus is equal to time t equal to 0 equal to current at time t equal to 0 plus. That means the current across the inductor cannot change abruptly. These two conditions you must remember. If we look at that example 8.1 of Alexander the things will get more clear. In this particular example, a circuit is given as I draw here. There is a 12 volt DC source, there is a 4 ohm resistor, an inductor of 0.25 Henry and a capacitor here 0.1 farad here is a 2 ohm resistor and a switch here the switch is opened at time t equal to 0 before that it was closed the voltage across this capacitor is considered to be V and the current through this inductor is considered to be I. If this switch is open at time t equal to zero, you've got to find the initial conditions. That means you have to find First of all, A, current through the inductor at time t equal to 0 plus, voltage across the capacitor at time t equal to 0 plus, B, you have to find the derivative of the current at time t equal to 0 plus and the derivative of the voltage at time t equal to 0 plus and c you have to find the current at time t equal to infinity and the voltage at time t equal to infinity so these are the conditions that you have to find now if the switch is closed the switch is closed a long time before t equal to 0 it means that the circuit has reached to DC steady state already at t equal to 0. So at this DC steady state, the inductor acts like a short circuit. While the capacitor acts like an open circuit. At t equal to 0, the circuit could be redrawn as follows. Here is the 12 volt source. The register is here. The inductor it is acting like a short circuit. This capacitor is like an open circuit. And the switch is closed at t equal to 0. So this is what is the circuit. Let's put the value of the registers. This is 4 ohm and this is 2 ohm. So now 
we can find the current i at time t equal to 0 minus. So how it would be found i at t time equal to t equal to 0 minus it would be just this is a resistive circuit that means the voltage is 12 volt and the resistance is 4 plus 2 ohm. So this will give you 2 ampere. So since this particular current through the inductor cannot change appropriately so we can very well write that at I at t time t equal to 0 is equal to current at time t equal to 0 minus equal to current at time t equal to 0 plus. So we can write I at time t equal to 0 plus would be equal to 2 ampere. Similarly, since the voltage here is the voltage at time t equal to 0 minus across the capacitor. Since the voltage across this particular capacitor at time t equal to 0 minus cannot change abruptly, so it would be equal to voltage at time t equal to 0 equal to voltage at time t equal to 0 plus. So this particular voltage, if we cannot find from this particular circuit, that means this is the drop across this 2 ohm resistor. This 12 volt has been dropped in this 4 ohm resistor and 2 ohm resistor. So naturally, it will one third of the portion of the drop. So, it will be V0 plus would be equal to or you can just consider that V0 minus would be equal to 2 into I0 minus. That means 2 ampere, uh, 2 ohm resistor and the current flowing through it is I0 minus. So, it would be I0 minus we know that it is 2 ampere. So, 2 into 2 equal to 4 volt. So, V0 plus would be equal to 4 volt. So, we have already found I0 plus and V0 plus. So, a number A is found. Now, number B. At time T equal to 0 plus, the circuit, equivalent circuit, if we want to draw, we will find that this particular switch is open. So we will draw up the equivalent circuit like this. Here is a 12 volt DC source connected with 4 ohm register. And here is 0.25 Henry inductor. The switch is open, so this particular portion of the circuit need not to be drawn and there is a capacitor here which is having V here, the current is I and this is 0.1 farad. The voltage across the inductor is VL. Now we see that the same current I flows through the inductor as well as the capacitor. So current through this particular capacitor IC at T equal to 0 plus would be just the current through the inductor at time T equal to 0 plus but the current through this particular inductor cannot change abruptly so it must be equal to i0 plus do you understand me let me repeat this thing the circuit takes a look like this and the current that flows through the inductor also flows through the capacitor now capacitor current at time t equal to 0 would be equal to the inductor current at time t equal to 0 plus. But the inductor current cannot change abruptly. So this particular inductor current would be I0 plus. And now in our previous step, we have already found that I0 plus is equal to 2 ampere. So we can write that the capacitor current at time t equal to 0 plus would be equal to 2 ampere. Now recollect the expression for IC. IC is equal to C dVc by dt. 
that means we can write down that dvy by dt equal to ic by c so now dv at time 0 plus by dt will be equal to ic at time 0 plus and this ic at time t equal to 0 plus equal to we have already found that it is equal to 2 ampere that means the inductor current and c is equal to 0.1 farad so it will give you 20 volts per second similarly the voltage through inductor vl would be equal to l di by dt that is di by dt is equal to vl by l now we have to obtain vl by applying kvl in the loop of the circuit that i have drawn in figure b so if we apply kvl we can get since it was a 12 volt source i draw the circuit once again 12 volt source here was a resistor of 4 ohm here there was the inductor uh, and the capacitor was here so let me recollect the inductance it was 0.25 henry and the capacitance was 0.1 farad so this was the case so if i apply kvl over here then we can get this is a rise of 12 volts so 12 here the current flowing is i so here it will be 4 i it will be dropped because current enters here so it's a plus and this is a minus is a plus this is a minus this is plus and this is minus so we can write 12 so here there is a drop minus 4 into i then here uh, we can write the, if this is vl vl consider vl so this will be a drop vl and here it is another drop through the capacitor that means minus vc equal to zero so this all will be at time t equal to 0 plus at time t equal to 0 plus this kvl applies now so we can write like this for i 0 plus minus vl 0 plus minus vc 0 plus equal to 0 now from here if we now put the values here we only do not know the value of vl 0 plus other than we know i 0 plus and we know vc 0 plus which is equal to v at time t equal to 0 plus so it is 12 it is 2 ampere this we do not know and this we know it to be 4 volt equal to 0 so it will give us it will so it will give us vl at 0 plus as 12 minus 8 minus 4 equal to 0 volts so vl at time t equal to 0 plus will be equal to 12 minus 8 minus 4 equal to 0 volts now if we look at this particular equation di by dt equal to vl by l so we can 
find the derivative of i at time t equal to 0 plus writing like this di at 0 plus by dt would be equal to vl at 0 plus divided by l so vl we have already found it to be 0 and l is equal to 0.25 henry so it would give us 0 amperes per second so we have found out this alpha and this bravo now we got to find this charlie that means current through the inductor at time t equal to infinity and voltage across the capacitor at time t equal to infinity so see for t is equal to how the circuit would look like so this particular circuit will again come uh, at a steady state condition as time t approaches to infinity so the circuit would be like this here is a dc source of 12 volt the resistor will be there so since the circuit has already approached to a steady state condition so this inductor is again a short circuit and the capacitor is an open circuit so the circuit will look like this this is current i this is 4 ohm resistor and here is the drop across the capacitor v so from this particular circuit we can write that i at time t equal to infinity since the circuit is a open circuit so it would be just j here and v at time t equal to infinity this whole entire 12 volt will be dropped across this open circuit so this is equal to 12 volt so this is how you got to find the initial conditions and the condition of circuit current and voltage at time t equal to 0 minus time t equal to 0 plus and at time t equal to infinity and also the derivatives of i and v